This is going to be a very brief overview of some of the features that you can use with the premium version of Grammarly. So if you sign into your Grammarly account, you should be on premium. So there's two things that you'll want. The first is that you'll want to have the Grammarly Google Chrome add-in so that it automatically spell check and grammar check any emails that you're writing and stuff like that. But for writing papers and so forth, you'll really want to use the Grammarly editor. So you just go to grammarly.com and it should automatically take you to a screen that looks like this. Then you'll just press new and you'll paste in your document. Here's just an example of something that I've pasted in. And as long as you're signed into your account, you should be able to use all the advanced features. So you'll see some advanced issues. You'll also get a scorecard down here. Some of the great premium features are things like overused words and repetitive words. If you actually click to expand, then you'll get a little bit more information on what that error or correction is suggesting. As well, they will tell you some other words that you could use. So instead of splitting, maybe you would use breaking and you can simply click on the word and you'll see that it automatically changed it. If you didn't actually mean to do that, you can always just undo it by clicking right there. If you're using passive voice, for example, it will give you a little suggestion on what passive voice actually means. So that's what expanding these cards would be. Sometimes it'll just give you word suggestions. So paste in, they're saying you should use paste into. So if you just click on it, you'll see that it automatically changes. Or if I didn't want that, I can just undo. Another thing that's really helpful is if you need a synonym for a word. So say complex, I want a different word for complex. If I simply double click on the word to highlight it, then you'll see that on the right sidebar, I will get a bunch of different synonyms for that word. And if I just click on one of them, then it will automatically change it there. Again, I didn't mean to do that, so I'm gonna undo. You will wanna make sure that all your proper options are turned on. So if you go over here to this icon, I recommend that you just keep it on general default, but you can change what type of paper you're writing. Make sure that you have contextual spelling on, grammar on, punctuation on, sentence structure on, and style on. Make sure that all of these are turned on so you're maximizing the features that you can use. As well, there is a plagiarism check. Now, I actually copied and pasted this text from somewhere else, so you'll see that this says that my whole thing is unoriginal and actually links me out to where you can find the exact thing that I copied and pasted in. Anyway, that can be a nice feature to turn on or to turn off as you want. So normally I keep my plagiarism check off, but you might want to scan through your document before turning it in. As well, make sure that vocabulary enhancements are turned on. That's really important because that's where you'll get some really good recommendations on ways to improve your writing. You would just click down here on your scorecard and then you can just download a detailed report. And on the first page of that document will be your scorecard and then your whole essay with anything that they suggested that you change. I want to take you to a Google Doc and show you how Grammarly works in Google Doc. Please take note that Grammarly is currently in beta in Google Docs and what that means is they're still working on it and there are some kinks. It's not perfect yet, but it will be improving throughout the year. That's what it means that it's in beta. So basically when you have your Grammarly installed, you should see Grammarly always come up next to the URL bar in Chrome. And if you click on it, make sure that you enable it on Google Docs. And I also like to enable the second one, show definitions and synonyms. And that basically means that whenever you double click on anything, whether it be in a Google Doc or even if you're reading on a web page, when you have this enabled, the show definitions and synonyms via double click on all sites, then when you double click on a word, it will show synonyms right away. And you can just click to change it if you're in a Google Doc or something like that using Grammarly. So I think that's pretty neat. When Grammarly is checking, basically you'll see down here in the lower right corner that you have 11 errors or 11 things that they've caught. Now, if you click on that 11, you'll see that it's in beta still. And so the features here are not as rich as they are if you are in the actual Grammarly editor. So if you're writing a full paper, I still recommend at the end of all of this that you copy and paste it into Grammarly.com. And I'll show you why in a moment. But this is a great way if you're writing 
writing in a Google Doc for you to check as you're writing. So here you can see that Grammarly is picking up some errors. Here it's saying I should remove the comma. If I click on it, that would accept the change or I could ignore the change or I can just leave it be if I want. It just will be read and you can just ignore it yourself. So this was some verb errors that copy and pasted. So a lot of these sentences don't even make sense. But you can see that it corrects any grammar uh, mistakes that you're making. It will also catch any of your spelling mistakes. I don't want no pudding says I don't want any pudding. I want no pudding. So this will catch all your basic spelling and grammar mistakes. And also if you enable that double click thing, then you'll be able to get some synonyms, which can be very helpful in your writing. But let me just go ahead and show you why I say that a lot of times you're better off in the actual Grammarly editor. You'll see that when I paste it into the Grammarly editor, I get a lot more feedback here. So I get things like repetitive word, which can be very helpful. I get possibly confused words. I get more feedback about what error I made and how to correct it because if I click on the card, it gives me an example and it tells me what the correction means so I can learn a little bit more. Another thing you can do, you know, if there's a particular paragraph that you're struggling with and you know it doesn't sound right in your Google Doc, you can just copy and paste that one paragraph into Grammarly, workshop it, and then paste it back into Google Docs. So those are just all options that I wanted to show you, but just make sure that in this little bar, everything is enabled. And so that's a brief overview. Remember that some of the most important things are making sure that you're signed into the premium account. If you're not, then you need to go to grammarly.com slash edu and then press join your organization. And from there, if you sign in with your bullis email, then you will automatically be upgraded to premium. The second thing that you'll want to make sure is that all of these things are turned on under this icon and also that vocabulary enhancements are turned on. And then the third thing that I just want to remind you, if you double click on any word, then you will get synonyms right here that pop up and you can just click on any of them to change the word. And there's also an undo button that will pop up immediately if you didn't mean to make that change. Note that Grammarly does autosave, so anything that you're working on will automatically be saved here and you don't have to worry about losing anything. So hopefully that helps you get started and that you'll enjoy using Grammarly to improve your writing and your proofreading.